Welcome to the channel. This is Reliable Rudy. In this video, we'll be making our part three for Walt Disney Company, where we're focused on the stock analyzer tool. We'll be plugging in numbers. We'll be hopping over to uh, macro trends and using that to help us kind of plug in numbers and also using some of the data that we've tree acquired in the part one and part two Disney videos. But before I get into this, I am not a licensed financial advisor. Everything in this video contains only my opinion and is for entertainment purposes only. I also have no individual holding in Walt Disney, except for potentially in my VT Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund. So I have nothing to gain with the information that I'm presenting, I'm just stating my opinion. Okay, so getting into this video, we're going to start with revenue growth. So, I'm over here on macro trends. I have Disney's revenue from 2010 to 2022 pulled up. Now, as stated in the last, uh, when I went over the earnings report, and they had 26% growth right here. Now, I'm going to zoom in so we can uh, see this stuff a little bit better. Okay, so you can see here's that 26% revenue growth that they, that they had. Now, as I stated, that it was possible that from 2021, and even in the 2020 that they had easy comparable years to compare against. So you can see the following years after negative 40, negative 20s, and negative 13, they posted 44%, 26, 34, 23, and 26. Do I think this large spike in revenue is sustainable going into the future for a 10 year analysis? Remember, my job is to be conservative. I want to bake in as much margin and safety as I possibly can. So going to this revenue growth, I was uh, very focused on the financials of Disney through my first couple videos from the data from 2006 to 2018. Now you can see down here we see the growth metrics that they had. Now they had a couple uh, double digit growths but for the most part consistent single digit growth and on the higher single digit a little bit mid couple decreases here but pretty consistent growth from 20, 2006 all the way to 2018. So do I think this growth right here is sustainable? I'm not going to be plugging in 20% plus revenue growth. But for Disney, it's a matter of how long is it going to take them to get back on track to those consistent years of profitability, growth, and etc. Stuff like that. So for this first one for Disney, we're going to be a little bit on the wider side. I want to get a wide range to get a feel for uh, for some of these projections. So we're going to start with 5%. This is just saying 10 year analysis, they're going to consistently be able to put up 5%. I do think this is probably on the low side, but that's why it's a low assumption. We'll use 10 and 15. So a wider range margin right here compared to what I normally do. But as I said, I just want to get a feel for some of these projections right here. So next we have profit margin. Now I should zoom in so that you guys can see this a little bit better. We will zoom in to 150%. You guys should be able to see that pretty good right there. So now we're going to go over to margins. And right here we can see the profit margins of the company. Now same scenario that those last three years, if we go back to the everything money tab, here's their five year profit numbers. Now I've already stated that these last three years are definitely skewing their profit margins. There's no question about it that the last three years have definitely hurt them. So I'm not really as focused in plugging numbers in based off of this, but in the end, I still want to be conservative. So looking from 2010 to 2018, we can see we got a range, consistent growth all the way up. So that ranges from 9% to 16%. Now I can play around with these profit margins however I see fit, but it would make sense to use numbers for when they get back on track in between 9 to 16 percent. So I can, I, I'm going to run a couple different uh, variations of this, but for starters, they are, you can see right here, we're not near that yet. Their last quarter they put up, what was it, 6.4 percent, but the year before they had 5.3 percent as we showed in the earnings uh, report, the second video for Disney. So how long is it going to take them to get back on track? even at this range. So for a low assumption, I still want to uh, try to bake in as much margin and safety as possible. For a, so for a profit margin that I feel comfortable with would be, you know, probably six to eight percent on the low side. So we'll do a couple different metrics of this. We'll use six, 10, 
and 14. Now 14 I feel is being very generous saying that they're still far uh, decent ways away from getting back on track with this. So 14 is probably on the higher side. Now for free cash flow margins we'll use these same numbers 6, 10, and 14. This is going to be a wide number right here for sure. Now PE. I'm going to match the PE to the revenue growth that I am getting, that I'm getting generated to. So for a 5% revenue growth I'm probably only willing to pay like a 12 maybe a 14 but then you gotta add into account Disney they have a large moat there's going to be buyers for Disney in general because it's Disney because they have all these great brands so I could bump that up so I said 12 to 14 range for a 5% okay I'll give that a probably a 15 to 18 range so on the low side here we're gonna use 16 now for 10 percent I'm probably willing to pay that that 16 to 18 range but because it's Disney we're going to add in that extra bit of PE that we're willing to pay for Disney so we'll use 16 22 and 28 now for a price of free cash flow we're going to use these same numbers I'm not worried about about the disconnect right here I'm just worried about getting a baseline projection out there now I want a 15% return for Disney because if I'm not getting a 15% return I'm not going to change my investing strategy I'm going to continue dollar cost averaging into broadly diversified index funds like VT or VXUS I know there's other options out there but those are the two that I prefer so I want that 15% return we're going to hit analyze here now you can see if I believe these top numbers right here Disney getting right back on track right away okay I, this is definitely interesting current price of 123 for a 15% return I can buy this at $223 for a 15% return but how long is it going to take them to get back on track for these numbers now I can also t go in and tweak some of these numbers now if I were to look for Disney from a range in between this and kind of tighten these numbers down right here so I can see if I believe these middle assumptions these middle assumptions are are okay now I could also lower some of these these PE metrics down to add more margin of safety and let's see what this looks like with a 14 18 and 22 14 18 22 that's going to drastically change where I want to buy the stock so how much margin of safety do I want to bake into this so nonetheless if we go back to the metrics tab we can see Disney was trading under hundred dollars right here if I was plugging in these numbers for my analysis for Disney I'm I'm definitely starting to get attracted to the stock so I'm gonna hit this and we're gonna add this to a watch list right here stay on this page and we're going to tweak some of these numbers down now we're gonna take out this low revenue growth and we're going to tighten this down in between these numbers we're gonna use 10 to 14 now we're also gonna play around with these profit margins a little bit now on that low side if we go back to profit margins we can see I like this this 9% baseline I think it's very realistic for them to get back on track at this 9% profit margin level over a 10 year analysis so we're gonna use that for our baseline start on the low side now right here we're going to use 11 and we're going to use 13 and we're going to use these same margins for free cash flow now for this revenue growth I'm going to pay a little bit higher right there so I'm going to use 18 you know for for Disney we are going to add a little bit extra incentive there we're going to use 20 22 and 24 now I know that's higher than my first assumption but for the sake of this initial model right here we're going to use 20 22 and 24 we're gonna hit analyze now I can see if I believe these high numbers I'm definitely interested in the stock now middle assumptions Disney was trading in between here if I believe these numbers right here for Disney to get back on track I'm definitely interested in the stock right here but this is going to complete my stock analyzer tool I have a, a decent idea of where I want and I believe I, I had mentioned before I was pretty close to buying Disney I'm, I'm not even gonna lie and you're gonna see that on our next video when I pull up the chart and I have not changed anything with my charting going into this video um, when I pulled up the chart I seen everything that I had laid out and I was very interested I almost started a position in Disney but you guys will be able to see that information on the next video I hope you guys enjoy the content here and we'll see you on the next one